so the the result of this, this th- third level feminism is, is that as i said that if you see all of history as or oh, women have been exploited by men then the epics the epics are books which have in india the epics and in other religions also there are other cultures also there are their founding literature so all of them have been reread that way so even many classic books say in the west there is shakespeare there's wordsworth there's charles dickens and there are feminist readings of all of these where they try to show how actually they are all biased against women now, uh, so that has happened with in india also so the what happens with respect to feminist readings they say that women are simply seen as victims not as conscious agents with character and commitment so the strength of women is seen in a different way in scripture than the strength of men in the epics and that has been going on throughout history not just within the religious history or religious texts <coughs> but um, today it is ex- expected that a woman is successful only when she has a career the way the man has so it's it's a little strange that feminism claims that this that women's rights will be asserted when basically when women become better equal or better copycats of men than men now is that what is required so one of the one of the biggest controversial aspects of the ramayana is the exiling of sita and that is seen as the classic example of how uh, how, a, how a woman was exploited and abandoned and rejected for no fault of hers now there are many different explanations given for this one is of course is ram was concerned about his reputation and for his reputation he abandoned sita well okay that is one reading but what was the reputation over there that has to be understood now there are many other interpretations there is another interpretation is that again a feminist reading is that the dasharath was attached to kaikai and because of that attachment to kaikai he did something terrible he had ram exiled to the forest so when ram and sita united came back they came they united after uh, after the killing of ravan and they were in they were in ayodhya so then ram and sita were very happy together in the kingdom and at that time ram feared that i will become attached to sita the way dasharath became attached to kaikai and then i will do something wrong because of that attachment and that's why he was looking for an excuse to free himself from sita and when this accusation came up that he just used that accusation as a, as a pretext now this is such a ridiculous reading that now ram never considered dasharath to be attached to kaikai but that was the accusation that lakshman made that dasharath is so attached to kaikai that's why he is doing this and ram said no he is not doing this out of infatuation he is doing this out of obligation he has he's given his word to kaikai and he cannot take it back so ascribing this motive to ram is is a completely distorted and perverted reading of the ramayana now as i said sita's strength of character is seen even in her exile i have written the whole article on the exile of sita and it's in my book which different ramayana and i have a whole class on it but i'll focus on this theme that women in scriptures are not victims they are also conscious agents they have character they have commitment and the best way to understand why ram sent sita away is to see that as an act of sacrifice and you can compare that act of sacrifice to another act of sacrifice when dasharath sent ram away to the forest and then ram sent sita away to the forest both are acts of both are acts of sacrifice and dasharath didn't victimize ram dasharath was not getting any perverse pleasure in sending ram away dasharath was driven by his duty by his position and by his word he was forced against his will to send sita, send uh, ram away similarly ram didn't victimize sita ram got no joy in sending sita away if that had been ram's reason, if ram simply wanted to get rid of sita and he could have got rid of her and he could have married somebody else he didn't do that even after he sent sita away he still considered sita to be so respectable that he had a effigy of sita made a golden effigy which would sit next to him during the 
fire sacrifices that he was supposed to perform as a king. So Ram, just as Dashrat didn't consider Ram to have committed any wrong in any way, similarly Ram didn't consider Sita to have committed any wrong in any way. If he had considered Sita to be impure, why would he keep such an impure woman's effigy in uh, in the fire sacrifice? And why would the Brahmins allow such a impure woman's effigy to be kept? So it is an act of sacrifice. Now both when Dashrat sent Ram away. That that caused pain to Ram. That caused pain to Dashrath also. It was not that Dashrath was a power hungry man who was who was exploiting Ram. No, both of them were they had to sacrifice for the higher cause because that's what duty called them. Similarly, Ram and Sita they sacrificed for a higher cause when they got separated. Now, just Ram, this is Ram's exile was an act of sacrifice. Similarly, Sita's exile is an act of sacrifice for a higher duty. Now the specifics of the duty may be difficult for us to understand. In today's world, we may say that you know, okay, even if Dashrath had given some word to Kai Kai, you know, is he is he does he have to keep that word to such an extent that he has to send his son away uh, for no fault? Even Dashrath's action may not make sense to us, and similarly, Ram's action may not make sense to us. But the point is, the whole Ramayana is permeated with the spirit of sacrifice. That for the sake of duty, for the sake of higher cause, sacrifice. So Ram sacrificed for Dashrath's sake. Then Lakshman sacrifices for Ram's sake. That Lakshman goes with Ram, and Lakshman's wife wants to come with him, and Ram says no. So Lakshman says no. I want to be serving Ram. And then Bharat sacrifices for Ram's sake. How is that? Bharat doesn't enjoy any royal opulence. Bharat lives in a small cottage. Except voluntarily accepting terms of exile, similar to Ram's, he takes on the responsibility of the kingdom without taking any of the privileges of the kingdom. So Bharat sacrifices. So when Sita sacrifices when she goes with Ram to the forest, so that same act of sacrifice, which is running throughout the Ramayana, sees its culmination in Sita's going away. So both Ram and Sita sacrifice at that time. So it is not a rejection of Sita by Ram; rather, it is a A situation that forces them to get separate, separated, and they sacrifice for that purpose. Both of them sacrifice. So the point here is Sita. Sita is going away, is or Sita is being sent away. It's not Sita is simply a victim of Ram's uh, Ram's obsession with his reputation or something like that. Sita also understands. She she's heartbroken to be separated from Ram, but she understands. She I know why he's done it. my heart can't accept it but i know why she has done it and the test that sita doesn't have this victim mentality is oh life is so unfair to me is that one proof the many we could have is that sita never poisons her son's minds about ram she doesn't tell anyone about who she tell them who her she actually uh, she doesn't really tell them who her father is but normally If say if two if there is a couple that gets separated, and then there are custody battles for the children, and usually what happens is each spouse you know poisons the children's mind against the other spouse while the children are here. Hello, oh, the mother will say your father is so bad. He did this, this, and the father will say your mother is so bad. So if Sita had that feeling of being a victim, Sita would have spouted it out to Rama and Kush, but she never did that. So the point is that to think of. uh sita's exile or to read the epics in terms of this feminist lens where women are victims that is that is a it is a completely distorted reading 